Hello and welcome to Girls with Goals. I'm Neve Mar, and before I introduce our fantastic guest this week, I want to tell you about a competition that we are running in partnership with F and F at Tesco to launch their winter collection. F and F at Tesco are hosting a Great Gatsby fashion extravaganza in the Stella in Dublin on Wednesday, the 28th of November. There's going to be free cocktails, live music, and a screening of Baz Luhrmann's epic, The Great Gatsby. So. Dress to impress, and we have 10 pairs of tickets to give away. So, if you'd like the chance to go along, you can follow the link in our subscription box, or if you're listening on the podcast apps as well, I'll put all the information in the bio, or you can head over to her.ie as well and find out all that. So, we'll talk about that a little bit. But anyway, down to business. My guests are here, so I would like to introduce the lovely Emma Manley, fashion designer and friend of the show. Welcome. Thank you. And first time on the show, Jenny Houston. You're very welcome as well. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. It's great to have you guys. The brick is impressive. Are you impressed? I'm very impressed. Are you impressed more with the brick or the way I did my competition piece to camera? I was in awe. Really? (laughs) There were a lot of words. <sighs> this is coming from an expert, yeah. you know? And I probably forgot about 75 of them as well, so I might have to redo that <laughs> again. But we're not going to do it now. We are going to start off with our game. It's called Six Words or Less, and it's for our readers and our listeners of the show who may not know who you are. Now, Emma is a dab hand at this, so she's played the game before, but we're going to ask for six new words from Emma, and then we're going to go to you, Jenny. So, okay. in your own time. I have got six new words. Okay. So, bootstrapping pregnant in the Manly studio. Yay! Done and done. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations, by Thank the you. way. Yeah, it's a gorgeous little bump. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. So, six words for me. Mm. Uh, Canadian Irish lightning boat loving rock check. Yes. That was great. Jenny to a T. It was really, really cool. Yeah. I liked Apparently, it. in a couple of years, I can flip it and say Irish Canadian, but you have to say wherever you've lived longest first. Is that a rule? Apparently, that's the way it goes. Because I always wondered, when are you Irish Canadian? When are you Canadian Irish? And they're like, well, technically, you're Canadian Irish. And I was like, there's more okay. mistake to the Canadian Irish anyway for the moment yeah. for you. So. Sounds a bit backwards. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I always thought when people said Irish Canadian, it was they were born in Ireland and then they live in Canada. But I don't know, maybe I just made that up it, in my well, head. It, it, that's right. So yeah. I was born in Canada and I've been living in Ireland a long time, which is why I'm Canadian Irish. So you're Canadian Irish. Until I've lived in Ireland longer and then apparently you flip it. Gotcha. Yeah. I've learned so much already and we're only five minutes in. <laughs> I'm not quite so exotic, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Manley, Irish, through and through. Dove through and through. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Bloss, which is why I have you both here, of course. But before we do that, Jenny, a lot of people will know you from your broadcasting days. Back so in the Rock Chick days. Like, How yeah. did you go from 2FM and I knew you from Phantom as well to jewellery design? Well, in the background, the whole time I grew up in a jewellery workshop. Okay. So that's the thing that not everybody knows. You grew so up in a jewellery workshop? Pretty much. My mum's a goldsmith and gemologist. So, you know, <sighs> didn't lick it off a stone, as they would say. It was always there. So I just sort of took for granted. I, I suppose I, knew, I underestimated how much I already knew about it, just sort yeah. of learning through osmosis. So the whole time I was DJing and in fields, talking to rock bands and being very casual and converse loving. I suppose the jewellery that my mum made, which is really high end, I wasn't going to be wearing diamond encrusted pearls or emeralds to, you know, a muddy field. So I wasn't really wearing that sort of jewellery. I was wearing a lot of high street jewellery and I wanted to make jewellery in Ireland that my friends and I would like to wear. So this comes along. It's beautiful. The love of sort of statement jewellery that's actually well made and made here. So solid sterling silver and solid gold jewellery but Hallmark and Dublin Castle. So just kind of keeping all the traditional skills, but just making it non-traditional. And did you, when you kind of, would you say that you left broadcasting? Did you like make that decision to go, do you know what, I'm done here? Because you're working national radio, like you were kind of top of the top. Yeah, I know people think I was crazy and my colleagues thought I was crazy, but it was sort of that weird gut instinct. You know, sometimes you're just like, I just feel like it's time to do something new, like literally wanting a new challenge. And I saw that there was voluntary redundancy and I just sort of, out of curiosity, checked it out and sort of went, hmm. And then I never stopped thinking about it. You know, you get the butterflies in your stomach excitement, you know, like a an early date. Um, that's how I felt about redundancy. So I just suddenly thought, okay. Nice. Like, my, my stomach's telling me something. <laughs> so I literally went with my gut instinct on that and just decided to go for it. But it was also, I was 39, and I think there is that thing when you're coming up to 40, you're like, where am I going to be? And you're sort of checking 
I suppose all those dreams and plans and goals that you've had and my dream was always to be a DJ and then I got to do it mm. and then I was like okay well the, my other dream was always to set up a business so the entrepreneur in me was kind of was there. Were you just sick of rock stars as well? <laughs> <laughs> no designers are much worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, yeah, no I'm only <laughs> Kidding. We're great. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, I just, I love music. It was more that I loved it and I wanted to protect it. You know, when something's great, you're like, I wanted to stay great. I think I was afraid of it suddenly becoming, uh, yeah. A job. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I love music. It's my happy place. And it's, you know, it sounds so twee, but it really was a bit of a privilege to be able to do that for yeah. 10 years and get paid to play records. Like, I was well aware that there was a queue of about a thousand people in the bushes waiting to stab me. They wanted my job. But so, also people yeah. always tell you that as well when you work in radio, that yeah. there are a thousand people that are ready they to would replace kill for your job. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I suppose maybe if you're looking to the future in terms of career, it's not something that you might think that you'd be doing when you're 60, although obviously yeah. DJs do, but was that kind of something that you thought about? Did you look into the future and go, Definitely. maybe I don't want to be at Electric Picnic when I'm in yeah. my 50s, you know? Or maybe although I'm not the best awesome. person mm. to be talking about new music when I'm in my mid-50s. <laughs> so then if I'm not the best person, so to be the best person, you have to gig a few times a week. And I think that's really important. You have to be listening to new music all the time. You owe it to your listeners and to new music to do that. So if you get lazy with your job, then you're not doing a great job. And there's all these amazing Irish bands that deserve the attention yeah. so I just felt like I wanted to still do a good job leave on a high and then if I was going to stay doing it then maybe 50s and 60s I wouldn't want to be in Whelan's on a Monday night I might want to be on the couch watching Netflix you know yeah. having a hot cocoa I don't know <laughs> <laughs> or just drinking whiskey I don't know but like so I just um, yeah I just thought of thought either change directions mm. and move into talk radio or do something new and redundancy made me think I'll just try something new for a while and do some traveling, which was really fun. Yeah. yeah. And so Edge only is the jewelry line that you have. I yeah. mean, with still like references to kind of pop culture and rock, you can see yeah. it in the designs that you do. So obviously yeah. that was something you said your mother was a gemologist, which also yeah. is the best word I've ever heard, by the way. Yeah. I'd love it's so to, beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It's this? really, yeah. yeah, I'd love yeah. to be a gemologist, I'm not. Yeah, so it was just kind of being able to put a bit of my love and passion and a little bit of the music and my reference yeah. points into it. So that thing of, you know, like Emma's a great model for the BAM necklace the, from the pop art collection there. Love that. The sort of explosion, but it's that thing of like, just because it's statement jewelry doesn't have to be costume jewelry. And I kind yeah. of wanted to do quality statement jewelry. So, you know, sort of going into the high end. And, you know, for some people, if they know that they love lightning bolts, then why not buy a solid gold pair of lightning bolts? And, Absolutely. you know, I do gold rings and diamond rings and platinum rings and all those things, as well as the more affordable sterling silver jewelry. But I just was, we've all had jewelry where all of a sudden you realize that your finger's green and the plating's literally chipping off. It's not even I rubbing off. I still have the jewelry up until I met you. <laughs> she forced something else on me. It's like, all oh, right, okay, this is good yeah. jewelry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just that thing of just wanting to kind of um, not be so serious with the jewelry, you know, to have it still be playful, but have it be good quality. And thinking about people like me that on most given days, I'm wearing jeans and trainers, which is a lot of the world. And you think about off-duty Hollywood and, you know, rock stars or tech entrepreneurs. They could be billionaires and they're still wearing jeans and trainers. They might be better jeans and yeah. better trainers. But if you are somebody that likes casual dressing, then it's just that thing of what jewellery goes with that and how to elevate casual jewellery. I'm absolutely terrible at jewellery. Can I just mm -hmm. say, I? that's exactly, you've kind of hit the nail on the head there. So I like to dress comfortably and kind of be comfortable as much yeah. as I can. And I won a set of diamonds there a few weeks back and I've never owned diamonds before what? in my life. Yeah, I know, it was, am it was amazing. How did you just drop that in? You don't just win diamonds. Oh, well I did and I won them and I was so excited. But I haven't worn them. Um, I'm probably gonna give them to my mother because they, they honestly just don't really suit me because I'm just not a diamond girl. I think you just are or you aren't. And nothing wrong if you are, like a friend of mine wears diamonds all the time and she looks fantastic, but I look yeah. like I'm dressing up in my mother's diamonds essentially. But it's like that whole pearl thing. Like a yeah. lot of my friends would wear big pearl earrings. I wouldn't be caught dead in a pair. I don't yeah. understand them at all. Yeah. But And that's the, like the, the area of jewellery that you've introduced me to. I, I, I found it so strange initially because I was like, no, no, you have your diamonds and your pearls and then yeah. you've got your costume. But there is this space to actually express yourself and have a bit of personality. With good quality exactly. yeah. jewellery, yeah. yeah.
See, I can reset those diamonds for you in something that'll be street style. Oh, my, oh yeah, let's yeah. talk. Let's yeah. just scrub <laughs> giving them to your mom. Yeah. I was like, let, let me at those diamonds. Poor Catherine. Yeah. She's, 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 like, she's like, yeah, they don't suit you. They really don't. <laughs> She's yeah. Ryan the price. Christmas is coming around the bend. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about your jewellery line in a minute. But first, Emma, you're big fans of Manly, obviously, here at Her.ie. I think, I think everybody in Ireland knows about your label now at this point. Like, there's absolutely no point in, in saying new fashion designer Emma Manley because it's so established now. Um, but if somebody is listening mm -hmm. and they didn't pick up on the last episode, which you can get on SoundCloud, by the way, go back and listen. Louise O'Neill was on it as well with you and it was she brilliant. Was indeed, yeah. But tell us, how's Manly going? How's everything yeah, like, ticking along? Yeah, it's great. You know, it's still going from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. We're at this point, like we're in year seven. Um, and I suppose for somebody who started as a women's wear brand, it's great to kind of have, I suppose, see it develop into now being an accessories brand. Yeah. So we've jewellery and bags and we make them from all the offcuts of our leather from our women's wear line. So we're also going in the very conscious direction. Um, so look, Manly's always a challenge and I think that's what I like about it. And I think that's what a lot of Irish designers love about their jobs. Mm. You know, you're always working really, really hard to bring out something that, number one, you love, that your customer loves and that's completely new and fresh you know, to the industry. And I'm still adoring the challenge. Yeah. God knows why, but I am. And, you know, there's always, every day brings something new. Like we're always creating new pieces right now. We're doing a new collection of bags for next year. Yeah. You know, I've grown bored of what we have. I love them, they're timeless, but I need more. Right. Um, so yeah, there's always something new going on. And obviously with Blossom the side as well, it's, you know, it's an amazing opportunity to see Manly sell in a store where I personally am selling it sometimes too. I've never had that kind of opportunity to sell directly to the customer. It's like bricks and mortar, you're in yeah. the shop, you're on shifts, you're you're working the floor. Big time yeah. because you know usually it's either on the other end of a computer mm -hmm. taking in sales, shipping them out and you don't have that face to face or else you're you're selling to you know a boutique owner or a department store buyer and yeah. you don't get to chat to the end customer whereas now I'm having like daily conversations with customers and you kind of you learn a lot it's great so let's talk about Bloss then a little bit so just in case we kind of just started talking about it there but in case people don't know about it um, it opened up last month right and it's running it until indeed. January it is so it is a pop-up design well it's a pop-up Irish design it's you, an Irish designer just, pop -up. you guys do it <laughs> yeah. yeah we've we've right now we've got 40 Irish designers under 40? the one roof wow. yeah in Blast which is located in Dundrum mm. um so we're in the Pembroke district so we're right beside five guys for anybody that needs to know where to get yeah, us it's because above Wagga Mama you know? yeah, it's, yeah it's not around all the food yeah yeah Important. exactly yeah. because no. you know shopping it, it makes you hungry Absolutely. we're just thinking about our customers <laughs> um but we I think between myself and Jenny, we've really curated what we feel is, I suppose, some of the best of Irish. Um, we have a, you know, a small island that is absolutely bustling with talent and quality. And to be able to give it a home in one place has it's, been a dream huge. come true. Like the, the amount of designers that if when people go into Bloss, they'll say, I've never heard of them. And that's the whole point of mm. Bloss. There's people like Emma that have a well-recognized uh, label at this stage and people that have been in business 15, 20 years that people know and have huge followings. And there's people that have been in business three years, five years that nobody's ever heard of. And most of them don't have a retail presence or if they do, it's it's often a department store presence for three to five weeks. Right. So they never really get a chance to kind of be somewhere permanently for people to really see the quality of their work. And I mean, I know even from meeting Emma and you know, I'm sporting some manly underneath my electronic sheet, both of which are in Bloss, but until I would never bought probably a leather t-shirt because mm. I was thinking, oh, how would I clean it, all those things. And now I'm completely sold because I know price per wear, that's the best value item I've ever bought yeah. because it just lasts year after year after year and it's a great go-to sort of thing. Whereas before I would have thought, oh, I don't know, it's a bit of an investment. And I think that's the thing that with a lot of the Irish design, it's smaller batches, it's higher quality, the better finishing and things like that. And it's great in a world of high street to go to a party and know that nobody else will be wearing it okay. because there was only 10 made yeah. rather than 500, 5,000 made in say, one of our favorites, you know, so. Yeah. Um, it's, it's also in a time when, you know, we're so used to, if people say like, oh, your dress is lovely, you're used to hearing a shop name, one yeah. in particular, thrown yeah. back at you. Yeah. Whereas if somebody says to us or about any of our designers, oh, I love your dress, it's like, do you know the story behind it? Because there's actually a really interesting story. Yeah. And it's, you know, we've got 40 of those going yeah. on right now under one roof, so Absolutely. it's pretty awesome. And how did you guys 
Mm. Meat. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. right around yeah. the corner in yeah. the Guinness Enterprise Center. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and I this has been like it's been the guts of a year worth of work in order even to longer. open the doors longer. Yeah, yeah. Longer. Really? longer. So how did it happen? So we were both. Um, um, it was with Showcase, we said hello, yeah. we we're both in the desi um, Design and Crafts Council's area and then we were in the Guinness Enterprise Centre, both had offices there. Emma had a huge red brick you know, office that I was very jealous of. Mm. Um, and we nice. you know, go for wine and chat and talk business and you, whether you're a jewellery designer. So can I just clarify, yeah. we did not go for wine, we went to Little to buy a bottle of the cheapest <laughs> wine to bring back to my studio. <laughs> And um, with macadamia, macadamia nuts. nuts, if we were lucky. Yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. sounds like the best going for wine ever, yeah. to be Fancy fair. Fancy designers mm. that we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So loads of sort of just shared struggles and shared goals yeah. and shared ambitions and also shared work ethic. I think that's something that we kind of recognise in each other really quickly is that even though I'm jewellery and she's fashion, I was mm. learning about fashion, she was learning about jewellery, but we realised that we both worked really hard. If she asked me to do something, I did it. If I asked her about something, she'd follow through. And it's that kind of follow through that is essential and that mutual respect that I think really makes a business relationship work. Because yeah. there has to be that kind of respect for a partnership. And now it's amazing because if we've got a list, we can divide it up. I know Emma's side is good and vice versa, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's interesting because I think when it comes to partnerships, in particular when you're talking about business, sometimes you can meet somebody who's incredibly like-minded and you're like, I could do incredible things with this person. But then like that, it could be eight bottles of little wine down the road and nothing has come out of it. And then the next oh, day on, you wake up with a thrashing <laughs> hangover and you're like, did I start a business last night? I'm not entirely sure. So like whatever about the chats, mm. how did it actually go to this is something that is really sustainable and could happen as a business. It was actually interesting because we both have the same accountant okay. and Paul oh. is now our third business partner. Paul! Yeah. Where is he? <laughs> He's Paul. hiding. He's hiding. Finance He's camera shy. Yeah. Poor okay. Paul and um, his poor wife and daughter. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think I think he kind of at the end of every year would sit us down to give us like, you know, the news of our accounts and yeah. he's used to dealing with I suppose uh, high potential startups. He's used to dealing with tech companies. Right. And he's looking at us going jeepers what is going on like why is there no support system like and he talked to us about funding mm. and I'd say yeah you know I've gone for that but I was told I wasn't high potential enough there was always issues 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 yeah. issues we were never gonna get an investor the millions back that they wanted mm. but I suppose there was a, a massive neglect on what we were doing for culture and what we were doing to keep industries alive in Ireland yeah. and and sustainable businesses, yeah. you know, the amount of businesses that started at the same time as me were given 50k or a few hundred k from, you know, Enterprise Ireland or whatever, and then they're all gone. They're yeah. all gone. You know, they burn through the money. It's like somebody else gets to market first or they fell apart or, you know, they scale too quickly because part of that whole high potential is getting to 10 employees within three years or an exit in three to five years. And I don't want to sell my business in five years. I'm still working on it. Yeah. So it's that thing of eventually I might sell my business, but I'm still enjoying the process of building it and seeing where it can go. So the, in that tech world, it's all about high return, sell it, yeah. move on, um, and everybody's hoping Make to be... quick money. Yeah, yeah. to be Instagram. And that's so know. everything that we're against. I think yeah. we're not about a quick book. We're about longevity and, you know... Sustainability. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting because I was reading some of the press around the time that you guys launched, and one of the things that I noticed you talking about a little bit when it came to the design quality that's here in Ireland yeah. and just the level of talent is that, you know, after 2008, after the crash, everybody scattered, you know, like, I mean, of all the things that people were going to start investing in or, or putting money into the creative arts and, and fashion and stuff, yeah. maybe wasn't a high priority. So a lot of people left. It was but no priority, yeah. Yeah, Big so with, with you guys kind of doing something like Bloss, and I suppose it's about, you know, their strength in numbers, essentially bringing Irish designers Big together. Time. Is this the time for them to come back? Because, I mean, slightly away from fashion and jewellery and stuff like that, but in general, the amount of people who've emigrated, yeah. you know, Ireland is still an expensive place to come back to but you know and when we say about those yeah. big brands that we're kind of competing against when it comes to fast fashion do you think that the tide is changing when it comes to Irish design and what Irish people are willing to spend their money on as big well because time. of course we big need time. to spend in order to keep Irish designers yeah, totally. in business you know and that's that's something I think people forget a lot of the time mm. is that you know when there's a few more kind of bobs in, in their wallet that sometimes they are spending on companies that are abroad and putting money into different economies yeah. you know there is more ready cash out there right now and people are willing to part more money 
on items for themselves that aren't necessities. Um, and I suppose that's where we come into play. And right now is our time in terms of for the creative industry in Ireland. It's the time we, we've been, you know, deprived of customers for so, so long. And now they're back. And I think, you know, it, part of the idea behind Bloss is like it, it, it's the perfect timing for this. And we want to say, like, here is everybody, you know, on under one roof, on one place. This is what we have to offer. You can, we've so much to offer. There's on literally it. something for everyone. Literally. And I mean, we really feel strongly that when a mother and a daughter and the grandchild come in, that they're literally, um, you know, there's a velvet dress for the little girl. There's classic women's wear and cashmere and silk scarves for a mom or grandmother. And then, you know, all the cool contemporary stuff from Jill and Jill to Manly to, you know, electronic sheep. I mean, and then men's wear. We've got great men's grooming and we've got really cool homewares as well, you know, concretes and, you know, A and L and really funky stuff you know like really it's just literally you'd be hard pressed to sort of go in and not be torn between how many things you want to buy so it's a mini department store yeah. so that but they I can, don't think you know, people are used to seeing it in that light that's yeah. the whole point is that like everyone when you say about Irish you think straight away to twee you think of yeah. craft and even when we were working um you know on the kind of uh, the graphic design side of things it was very much like remove the word craft, remove the word. And there was all these different things that we did not want to represent because yeah. it's not the reality of Irish design these days. And yes, we still have beautiful iron jumper makers, yeah. but you know what? We've got a hell of a lot cooler so stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, so you know. More. And iron jumpers aren't flattering on everybody, let's be no, honest. Like no, like definitely not. But yeah. you were talking about, you know, people coming back, Neve. And I mean, the reality is we want to actually go out into the world. Yeah. Bloss at Dundrum was really like a test case for us taking Bloss to LA and New York and Dubai and Singapore and taking it to Australia. So it's almost time for the Irish designers mm -hmm. to go, but not yeah. through choice as opposed to having to go in search of work. Yeah, because that's to what happened yeah, in 2008. Absolutely. You know, yeah. the designers left. You went to London to get your internships and to try and start your career over there and stuff. But now it's about actually. We have incredible success on our island, but it is a small island, so yeah. we want to take we that also success have elsewhere. Like a diaspora that is wanting Irish yeah. and as much and all as when they come home you know is the time to, to to maybe pick up Irish bits and bobs we don't have a really great representation of Irish design in Ireland right now other than Bloss if, yeah. if I'm being honest that's yeah. how I feel no, about it yeah. so I think you know our ambition to go away and offer you know the amount the sheer amount of brands that we have to whether it be the Irish diaspora or whoever else Luxury may want consumers. to consumers I mean yeah. the, the sad Simplized. reality is if we're being totally honest Ireland is not known for fashion. Oh. We're not known for luxury fashion. Know, We're yeah. known for Aaron and Tweed, and we do that exceptionally well. Mm. But we've and been doing that. colors, surely at this point. Yeah, I mean, come obviously, come yeah, on, yeah, some other colors. Yeah, <laughs> and lightning family. bolts. I mean, <laughs> Ireland lightning bolts synonymous. Yeah. Um, but you know, maybe one day they will be. But the whole idea that you could say to somebody, "This is Irish. This is Irish. This is Irish," because I don't think people would go. They'd be, they're really surprised. They kind yeah. of think, "Oh, okay," and that's what we want people to see. We want actually people to know that we do have talent. It's just we don't really have that export agency. You know, the British Fashion Council have done an amazing job of creating London Fashion Week and really supporting designers. But it was a really long term project that didn't happen overnight. That was long term sustained investment. And that's what we need if we want to kind of do we punch have and, the do we have any of that? I'm no. sorry, I'm no. pleading ignorance on no, this one in terms don't. of fashion weeks. But Not in fashion. No. no. So we do have a crafts council and they do a really good job for craft. They really do. Yeah. But fashion is a different baby and it's a different markup and they're different you know they're different agents and buyers and it's it's quite a different thing to concentrate and they try to do it both in the same and it it, it doesn't really work because somebody's going to come and they're looking to buy Aaron jumpers and they're looking to buy tweeds and they're right, looking to buy yeah. Celtic jewelry they're not looking for edgy stuff so you're not getting the same buyer at those sort of shows so you yeah. kind of have to be in New York Paris Milan London so we're still kind of catching up I suppose yeah. you could say or like not catching then, up because I think that's insulting to designers that are yeah. here, but I mean catching up in terms of the, the global. But there's the there's global lots of there's lots of countries worldwide that don't don't have maybe support systems yeah. like oh well actually there's probably not lots we're probably yeah. one of the worst for it but uh, I suppose our attitude is like it's not here mm. so go get them yeah. yeah so whether it is go get the buyers go get the customers whatever it is it's time for us as designers to get off our asses yeah. and get over yeah. to to other countries to show people what we're made of do you know we're 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 a humble nation mm. and whilst it's cute and it's lovely and it's all the rest it's like now it's time to just shout about the deadliness we have because yeah. like 
when you look at even if you were to look at the influencers and the stylists and the people who are working within fashion and, and design and stuff, there are plenty though. Like there's lots of them. And they fly the flag really well. Well, they fly the flag for sure. And there's yeah. a huge amount of them online and they're making huge money within their industries. But when you say designers, I feel like you're gonna are you gonna <laughs> jump are you gonna jump over the couch at me like <laughs> I'm not an influencer, am I? No, I know. <laughs> But as no, in like yeah. it's it's there there are people who are making a lot of money off yeah. fashion like there yeah. really is yeah. but maybe not in the way that you would want the money to be coming in is that fair to say yeah I yeah, suppose very people need to thank you yeah. <laughs> oh where's Paul when I need him I think people do need to think about buying less and buying better you know right. so it's like you can't expect something that Emma's beautifully crafted in Ireland yeah. and Italy or that you know has been you know cast polished and filed and finished and hallmarked in Ireland to be the same price as something that was mass produced in Bangladesh yes you know and also nor should you be proud of the way that the, the workers are treated in Bangladesh mm -hmm. it's horrific you know those sort of living conditions of most of the fashion industry in the third world um, it's not something anybody can be proud of. Most people just don't want to know because it makes them feel bad. Mm. But there's a reason for that. So mm. it's like, well, make something, buy something that makes you feel good. You put it on, you feel deadly, and also you know you've supported one of your own great creatives. You know, yeah. so it's sort of, it's like, it's win-win yeah. all the time. You look great, you feel great. Yeah. The economy's bolstered. Totally. There you go. So talk us through <laughs> some of the designers then that are involved in Bloss. How did you? find them? Did they come to you? Did you just go, yes, these are all the incredible people I want to work with? How did that process happen? I think between the yeah. two of us, we know we know a lot of them. Like we, yeah. we can actually, you know, say that a lot of them are friends of ours. Okay. Um, so we started off with a list of people who we admired their work, their brands, um, their work ethos, all the rest of it. Um, and then we still had space. And there's a lot of brands that we didn't know personally that we kind of, you know, made a list of and, and started contacting them. Um, and I think as people were signing up, the then other brands were kind of saying, Jesus, like, I'm not going to miss out on this. Like, yeah. this is an incredible list. Like, from the get-go, the list was so strong. Yeah. Like, our first 10 designers, we were like, if we opened a store with just them, we'd be proud. Mm. And now we've four times that. Yeah. But what's also been great... And a waiting list. Yeah, a, a fairly lengthy one. Yeah. But what's, what's so great are the little brands that are only starting out to get to be seen with the bigger brands. Yeah. Um, like there's no, I don't think there's any, well, no, I don't think there's anybody that we've had any kind of, no, I don't want them in and you really like them and I don't. Yeah. There's the, we, we kind of love everybody that we have. And yeah. you know, if we could just have a bigger store, we'd have more, <laughs> you, you know? With, like maybe a little bit of the production struggle when it comes to Irish designers and, and particularly, yeah, and particularly yeah. maybe the smaller brands that aren't say as established as Manly, for example. Um, and you say that maybe they would pop up in department stores for a very short period of time. Is that something that, you know, if you're starting a label or, or you're starting a jewellery line that you are 100% going to be faced with? Is that the process that you have to go through? And therefore, are these smaller designers then going, thank Christ for something like Bloss because it's actually going to be a really great showcase for us. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's a great showcase for them. It's positioning, as Emma highlighted there, when there's an established brand and you're a new brand and you're seen in the same way and in the same beautiful space. Because often you're in sort of borderline craft market, then yeah. sort of trying to move your way up and it's trying to get all those little things like from the nicer swing tags, the nicer labels, the nicer yeah. bags, the boxes, all those little luxury touches that we've come to expect, you mm -hmm. know, um, we all know that sort of some brands we buy practically just for the packaging. It's it's almost half the experience, and and all those things are really challenging for a small designer because when you want to do something like that and create a bespoke box, chances are you need to buy five hundred or a thousand of them, it's and you're like, it's I crippling. Think, yeah, yeah. And again, minimum orders and things like that for fashion designers are, are really tricky. So when you get an opportunity to go into a department store, often the orders are something that they're not actually, it's it's really hard for them to even make that minimum order and then to do it again if all of a sudden they have to sample spring, summer and autumn, winter and it just keeps yeah. sort of stockpiling. And then if you don't have a channel to sell that stock, if all of a sudden you're out of that department store, yeah. it's really hard to convey quality online. So you've got beautiful soft cashmere or the quality, the softness of the leather or the, the you know, the colours of the silk. It's really hard to get that across in e-commerce, you know, the weight of a ring. So I think that's why bricks and mortar are really important to introduce somebody to a brand because once somebody's bought one of Emma's leather dresses or an electronic sheep sweater and they know that they it lasts for them for years yeah they don't worry about it the next time they go online because they know 
I wear a medium. Absolutely, and that was one of the things I remember when I bought, I bought a manly piece around the time of repeal and I bought a dress and that was the one thing that I was showing everybody. I was like, feel the weight of this yoke. (laughs) This is amazing. And the noise it makes. And the noise it makes, yeah. You hear you before you see you. Yeah, Yeah. but I mean, and I had looked at it obviously online and I've seen, you know, a lot of manly stuff, but like that, it's hard to get that across just from looking at a picture. And it's not a flipping purse just that's, you know, two for 13 or whatever you get these days on like the, the high street websites. So like there's a lot of thought that goes into it and, and we're much quicker to talk ourselves out of those purchases yeah. and just say, do you know what? That's a lot to risk it on. And even though we do offer like free, you know, shipping back or free returns, whatever it might be, free postage, all the rest of it, it's still not enough to get the customer. But I know that the customers that are leaving Bloss now, they're walking out with a bag with a brand and they will go back and return custom to like directly to that brand, which yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. You know, we don't want everything just through blasts, like great. We want but also, to grow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's as well about maybe conscious spending. I would be quite scared to look at my spending if I was to look at the investment pieces as opposed to the maybe two for one type purchases. Yeah. And I think maybe like what you were saying about a certain mm-hmm. store that everybody just rattles off nowadays. Mm-hmm. I would say that if anybody, everybody counts up the amount of money that they're actually mm-hmm. spending, um, it would be quite yeah. terrifying. Or like a couple pieces that they'd be really proud of instead of the ones that you wear them once and kind of go, uh, yeah. didn't wash so well. Or yeah. or that yeah. like sale basket that you have, um, yeah. like when you're when it's sale time and you're like adding stuff to the basket and then you click to check it and you're like, holy crap, how did I get up to yeah. like 350 yeah. quid on like 12 items? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, it's just, it's it's unnecessary. So Bloss is something that's, um, I, again, like, I'm not a huge fashionista. I actually got into a lot of trouble for wearing black and navy today. So <laughs> thank you to, you know who you are, who yeah. said that to me in I'm the office. I'm wearing navy too. I just threw some color on over so top. Do you know what? Yeah. I don't, We're kind of coordinating oh, at all. Yeah, I don't buy too. into that whole yeah. don't wear these colors. Didn't everybody say you couldn't wear pink and red together and Absolutely. now everybody's wearing yeah. pink and red? Intentional clashing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. intentional yeah. clashing. Navy are beautiful yeah. together. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I mean, it was a little dim in my room. I'm not going to lie. So I didn't necessarily know that it was Did black. Did you actually it, think that they were black? No, I thought this was a little bit lighter. But I also think <laughs> I might be slightly colorblind. Um, but that's another show altogether. Uh, what was I saying? Literally, God I, knows. I have no idea. Sorry, I was talking about Conscious fashion. Line, yeah. Obviously, yeah, I was yeah. talking about fashion. So we're talking a lot about Bloss, obviously. It's something that I haven't seen happen with Irish design in this country yet. So obviously you said that your plan is to expand and to go bigger. So where would you like to see Ireland as a nation in the next kind of 10 years when it comes to our jewellery and our fashion and our consumption and our sustainability in terms of buying? Ooh, big. Big big question. I would just like people outside of Ireland to actually know that we had fashion designers um, for starters you know to think of us as being cool creative in the way that we are with everything else like Ireland's music incredible Ireland at sports punch way above our weight in literature and absolutely everything you know yeah I mean like do you think that we're kind of it's the only aspect of our arts and culture that we don't punch above our weight and we punch way below Um, So for other countries like Sweden would really invest in it. They're a really small country that has huge pop and huge fashion and things like that and they'd really support it. So we punch above our weight in every other sector except fashion. So I'd like to see that. I think we're quite stylish. Not a lot of it is depending on what I'm wearing today, (laughs) but I mean, we're we're good, aren't we? We we are. We have amazing designers. And listen, Irish women are glamorous, really glamorous. They really are. I think we've come out of our shells so much in the past few years. Irish women are really experimenting more and just pushing the boundaries. It's not that safe dressing that it used to be at all. It's fantastic to see. And so where would you want to see us then in 10 years, just like that, to be not Punching to, above our way, just to be kind of recognised as an island that has incredible fashion and jewellery designers. Yeah, I don't think it's something that's going to happen overnight. Like, yeah. that's yeah. that's the honest answer. Mm. But if we can open, you know, some people's eyes up to the fact that we do have all this talent, isn't that, you know, great? And maybe to start, you know, talking about our own a little bit more. You know, we do, as Jenny has pointed out, talk about, you know, Irish musicians and sports and all the rest of it. And it's, it's time for, for space for, you know, our designers and our jewellers and... Our Milners, we like we've such talent. Let's yeah. start. Let's start. You know, talking about you them. You know the way and people say Scandi cool and things like that. The fact that we know that there's a Scandinavian look. Like if you ask somebody Irish, 
you know that they're gonna say like basically fisherman sweater. What is the first thing that pops into your head? I mean, it's, it's kind it's of unfortunate. Jumper, yeah, so I don't really think. really do need to change that go-to. Yeah. So when we talk about Scandi Cool, like everybody kind of knows, you're talking kind of minimalist, probably tonal grays or something like that, yeah. you know? Um, you know, that tonal dressing yeah. that's really in the whole, it is the whole Scandi so thing. So you guys want like Ireland to be just leather to be, and lightning yeah. bolts, maybe. Irish maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, just, we're just, just saying, yeah. go, You know, that new wave of Irish fashion, you know, it's very, you know, like we would just like people to be writing so that in Berlin and Australia, New York, LA, whatever that they're talking about, the new wave of Irish fashion or something like that. Yeah. It'd be great. Absolutely. You know, I'd be on board with it. Yeah. Do you guys think that Bloss is going to be extended or what's the plan for the future of it? January 7th is when it's kind of wrapping up for now. Yeah. 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 I That's suppose. Something. Yeah. It, it's. There's a lot of people knocking yeah. at our door, which is great, which yeah. is very exciting. Um, I think an awful lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. It's Run like off it, a speech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we, like we've been sitting down chatting, so we'll, we'll have a few meetings, but there's a lot of people excited by what they see. I think the reality is people come into Bloss and go, wow, yeah. it's not what they expect for all Irish design and people are really impressed. So I think it's really opened the doors for us to take our designers with us to some luxury markets and that's what we hope to do. I, like we've we've always said that this was, you know, the I suppose the, the trial for us. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if we can achieve our goals. and. I suppose what we're a month in and mm. I I don't like silence from people but now when people walk in the store and they're so silent because they're so blown away by it yeah. I'm like okay this is like wow. this is working so I think we need to kind of sit down at the end as a, a trio and say where to next and what are we doing next and as Jenny has you know alluded to we've had a lot of people knocking on the doors and you know various different suggestions have been made but it's up to us to make a really clever and I suppose, a long-term decision mm. for Bloss, but for our designers. We, we right now have 40 people that we want to see their businesses absolutely blow up. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot on the waiting list too. So yeah. I think it's, it's, about, it's about really making the right move. Just because Bloss in Dundrum is a success um, doesn't mean we get to rest on our laurels. Like this is the first of like we we thought this whole thing was difficult like we thought you know having to change a, a store in three days and having to turn it around and the sleepless nights and the the constant whereas now yeah. I've come to the realization that that's the first step in what's going to be a massive mm. bloody staircase yeah yeah it's, it's a long haul thing but yeah it's it's yeah. it's doable we're, why do you think it hasn't been done before do you think it just needed you two I've to no come together? I have no idea, actually. It is a lot of work. A, a num yeah. I think it's a yeah. number of things. I, I honestly think, number one, having a, a financial head there yeah. um, to be able to bounce the numbers off and to be able to, you know, get the, the daily emails kind of saying where we're going right and where we're going wrong because we, we don't necessarily look yeah. look to that like we're creatives yeah. but I, I do think that both myself and Jenny are quite business driven but we're also creatives and I do think that having two people who have been through the graft and the struggle and I, I hate saying that because it's a, it's a bit of a, a victim kind of thing to say like oh it's so hard like I get it I could have gone to college and done marketing and be off you know yeah. making shit loads of money right now well, I do I, know I, that I don't think that that's you know victim I think if you have your own business and you have your own label that's hard and you're investing in yourself yeah. solely and then you have to be your own champion so I think if yeah. you have been your own champion and it's working out and it's being successful, then we should shout about it. Yeah. You know, why and I not? think we could probably make a lot of designers' lives that little bit or their journey a little bit easier yeah. than ours have been. And, you know, we kind of, we look forward to getting to that stage Absolutely. and doing it. Is there a certain element as well? And it's just something that I, I read about when you guys were kind of launching it in terms of the strength and numbers and all of mm. these incredible designers coming yeah. together. Is there anything of maybe why it wasn't done before because it's competitive and like are these people or were they competing against each other it's such a totally small, possibly. small yeah. market essentially yeah. but obviously everybody wants to expand really? it more yeah no i've heard stories about the 80s and the 90s somebody said to me oh fashion nobody would talk to each other everybody was so competitive and it's it, interesting i think it sometimes has to be a competitive industry changes, yeah. whatever, and we're not like that i mean i you know i invited five other jewelry brands to come into my store. I didn't try to be the only jeweler. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's like, that's really unrealistic. And also, it's the real world. Mm. We're, we are in competition with yeah. each other, so let's put on our big girl but pants and, yeah. you know, and get out there and, it's healthy you know. competition as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And also, 
not like jewelry and fashion is really personal. That's the whole point is that it's all about an expression of your individuality. So somebody will be into minimalist tailing and somebody else will be into heavily embellished and somebody else will be full on yeah. glam. And we yeah. want to be able to cater to all of them and just do it with quality gear that that's been designed by one of our own, you know? Um, so, I mean, really it's, I think, we have an attitude of you're stronger together. I'm all about the sisterhood, you know? Yes, and, and yeah, totally. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just throw it in there. there. Absolutely. Why not? So yeah, I just think everything's a lot easier when you have somebody you can yeah. cry over a glass of wine to, you Absolutely, know? Absolutely, yeah. And what's next then for your own particular brand? So Edge only? Yeah, at the moment it's all Christmas excitement. So gifted at the RDS and maybe the Dublin Flea as well. And just went into Wolf and Badger King's Cross in London. It's oh, wow. an amazing new yeah. flagship. So I was with Wolf and Badger in um, New York and in Notting Hill, but they've opened just a huge new store in King's Cross. Incredible. I was there yesterday, it's stunning. And wow. Emma's in there as well. And yeah. electronic sheep are going to be going in there as well. So Amazing. there'll be loads of cool Irish design in London. And what about radio or broadcasting? Do you ever miss the gigs? Do you ever want to go back? Yeah, I, I would actually really love to just have a good rock gig to go to. I kind of keep forgetting to sort of write these things in my diaries. I'm, I'm sort of permanently in sort of fashion designer Blast mode at the yeah. moment. You do the playlists for Blast. You're I, grand. No. You're grand. <laughs> She's busy. Well, that's kind of what I want the kills to, to be in town tomorrow night so that I could just go to the kills, you know, have, yeah, and just have some loud, dirty music would make me very happy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But well, no. then we might have Jenny Houston returning to our airwaves yeah. soon. <laughs> Exclusive. You heard it here first. <laughs> Tell everyone. Emma, what about you? What about Manly? Um, yes. Obviously, you're adding to your yes. Manly brood. Yeah. So we'll have a brand new intern yeah. uh, at the end of March. <laughs> um, him or her to work straight away. Yeah. I suppose, you know, with, with a, a, a brand that is my own, my own life, you know, very much influences us. And yeah. I definitely feel very strongly about bringing out a maternity collection. Um, oh, that's so exciting. I was kind of hoping yeah. that you were going to say that, but I wanted you to say it. Yeah, okay. truth be told. Leather it's, overalls for kids. Yeah, and yeah. I don't care that it's leather maternity gear. It's all been sampled at the moment. Um, wow. And look, it may not <laughs> it may not get back in time for, yeah. for when I'm going to be the size of a house. But um, I think that... I want all my life experiences to influence what comes next for Manly and, and be it's reflective, yeah. yeah and you know it's something I've never had to think about and it actually makes me think about you know like my customer tends to be you know a working professional mm. and she may not have embarked on you know making a family yet or maybe she has and she chose not to buy us because we weren't maternity friendly up until now so yeah, yeah I think it's and then maybe I need to make some little people's things. We just Do have to wait and see. Do a little leather <laughs> overall for kids. Dungaree. So, so cute. cute. Yeah. So badass as well. They'd be I the can cute. buy them for a teddy bear or something, you know? I feel yeah. very strongly about like dressing the same as the kids. But did you, oh, 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 oh do it. Yeah, oh, God help it if it's it. a boy. But. In Manly, it would be amazing. <laughs> so but when you, like obviously you're pregnant at the moment and did your fashion, did you become a lot more aware of your body in terms of dressing it? Oh God, yeah. Like right, okay. things are happening that like, you hear you, people talk about it, but you don't understand it until you're actually physically, like this is probably the first time that you've seen me wearing something in any way tight. Like I've, yeah. I've been wearing leather dungarees for five months now, okay. like literally. Okay. Um, and you know, that's, that's fine, but it's, I, I suppose I have to be a little bit more kind of getting used to the fact that I will have to change how I dress yeah. and how my body is changing. And I suppose that's just part of, you know, for some women being, being who they are you yeah. know and it's exciting to hear about the evolution though that will come because like what you both said you are creative and so there's mm. so much of yourselves in your labels True. so it's very exciting to hear that there might be a maternity i know her daddy and her family will be so thrilled to hear that <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, exciting yeah. um so Bloss, though everybody who wants to go and check it out until yeah. january 7th in dundrum oh, where is it it's near the five guys so we're in the pembroke district which mm -hmm. is located in the uh, kind of outside area of where all the restaurants are in dundrum um so it goes harvey nicks then five guys and then right beside is us amazing, amazing. so yeah. exciting jenny houston and emma manley thank you so much for coming in and best of luck with everything thank, thank you for having I'm going to see you in Dundrum. Oh yeah, I'll be there. I'm going to be there. I can't wait to rock out to all the hardcore <laughs> playlists that you have going on, Jenny. Um, that is all the time we have. Don't forget as well that if you want to enter our competition in partnership with F&F &F or Tesco, do follow the link in the subscription box below. They're hosting a great Gatsby themed extravaganza in the Stella. Have you been to the Stella? Oh yeah. Stunning. Oh, it's so nice. Still too afraid it? to go on one of the beds. 
but well, the interesting thing about I'll get this, there. yeah, I've only sat in the big, huge chairs where you can put your feet up oh, and they're everything. The they're really, really yeah. comfortable. The table service at the cinema, how great is that? It's so amazing. And also, I had an old fashioned, which is just straight whiskey. Oh. Now, I only did that because I was seeing The Great Gatsby, so I wanted to be in the twenties. Turns out, just straight whiskey is absolutely disgusting, so I couldn't drink it. <laughs> but I held it for a little while. And uh, you yeah. felt the part. That's half the, I, I half felt the, the part. Thing. Exactly. Once it's been documented for Instagram. <laughs> that was. I literally just took a picture and then gave it away. Didn't so. even watch the move. <laughs> <laughs> I left. <laughs> I just arrived, took a picture and left. Um, 28th of November, please stay for the movie. And uh, we're giving away 10 pairs of tickets. So that's it for now. We'll see you next week. <laughs>